Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yeah. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. I am Dustin Goes Hollywood. I'm Eric Estrada from <laughs> Chips. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nathan Simmons. I'm a vicious snowflake, and this is the Silver Linings Playlist, the show where we try to find the silver linings and some of cinema's bleakest endings. And guys, if you can't tell from my voice, I'm sick as shit. Really? Yeah. So a little preamble there. Thank you, Nathan, for, yeah. for doing that. You know what's funny, too, is last week, uh, Mally was recording in uh, different circumstances than normal yeah. and apologized right off the top for his quality, and yet it sounds pretty damn good. So yeah. You might not need to apologize now for... For the sound of your voice but you are sick we are hoping you feel better hopefully this movie thanks man made you feel a little bit better guys this movie fucks uh <laughs> that's like the best yeah, way. it does indeed this movie rules i was it was i think one of the first ones i threw down on the list whenever uh whenever mm -hmm. I, we hop, we started planning out the season yeah and i was very happy you did because i've been waiting to watch this movie until we were going to cover it on the sure. show yeah. So thank you, Nathan. Yeah, there's lots of movies that get added to the list, and I'm like, finally have an excuse to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, but you picked uh, this one, as you can tell, listener, from the title. We are talking about 2018's Mandy. Um, Nathan, why this one in particular? It is a... Um... I mean, it feels like an acid trip on film in more ways than one, and it has an ending that I is almost like... Every every version of the, the silver linings you guys look for on this show in the past where it's like sometimes it's sometimes it's a downer ending. Sometimes it's an ending that's that leaves you kind of confused or wanting an explanation. And sometimes it's just like an ending that makes you wonder what the hell, where do you go from here? Mm -hmm. And I think that this ending has all of that in, in one spot. True. Um, and also everything that leads up to it just feels like. I mean, dude, this movie looks like the side of a like a custom van. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, dude, it was like a two hour long sludge metal music video. Yes. Dude, yes. Yeah, and it also, was amazing. It has my favorite film score of maybe the last five years. It's so like it's it great. was very There's good. There's so much to love about this movie. One of Nicolas Cage's best performances. R.I.P. Oh, yeah. R.I.P. Yeah, Johan Johansson. Johan 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you picked it because I've only seen this movie once and I needed a reason to rewatch it. So this yeah. is it. Um, so, listener, if you're new to the show, first of all, thank you for finding us. Secondly, what we like to do is watch movies such as Mandy uh, that Nathan so eloquently, uh, eloquently put is that uh, sometimes movies don't end with a happily ever after. Sometimes they end with things a little distraught, a little distressed. And this movie, uh, yeah, it comes in spades where... You don't walk away feeling too good after the credits start to roll, especially this movie, because there's no fanfare, no music, nothing over the credits. It's just, yeah. no, nope, you're, you're yeah. left in your thoughts, <laughs> which is good. They didn't they didn't go like the buried route, which I like. No, <laughs> very few movies do go the buried route. <laughs> Thank God. Um, but yeah, so we actually have a guest joining us, gentlemen, for this week's episode. Uh, we returning do? guest. Woo. Uh, first of all, let me introduce him. Michael Overby. Say hi, Michael. Hey, what's going on, guys? So you were on past episode, uh, one episode that has kind of become infamous because <laughs> Mally had never seen the movie and now it's all he can fucking talk about. You were on the Knock Knock episode. Oh, yeah. What season was that? That was season two. Oh, Holy shit. Oh, <laughs> shit. I think the funny connection is you were on the Knock Knock episode. This movie has... Maybe the best knock knock the joke, greatest of knock -knock joke of all time. Very true, very true. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I thought that was it was almost serendipitous that you were yeah, you were yeah, on this episode. <laughs> I will say second best knock knock joke of all time. Uh -huh. Oh, what's the first one? The film knock knock. Oh, yeah, that is a joke. So, yeah. <laughs> you, you shut your whore mouth. <laughs> I still have never seen that. Like that's Oof. that's the one you guys told me not to look anything up and just watch it. Uh, cold. Okay, okay, guys. I know we've been talking about doing like an enemy redo mm -hmm. since the episode we did on enemy fuck that that's out the door let's recover knock knock <laughs> i'm here for it <laughs> let's do it right let's do it right fucking now nathan don't even worry about watching the movie we'll just walk you through it dude <laughs> yeah that might be an upcoming special we do a live watch of knock knock to get 
Nathan's reaction in real time because that would okay. certainly be interesting. Oh my god! I know you'd have some thoughts. <laughs> like, and dude, don't even worry. Like, you're not gonna have to rent it or anything. It's on Pornhub. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Is it really? Yes. Yeah, Is that's really? incredible. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I think we even talked about that on the episode. <laughs> yeah, because I was watching it with a friend of mine and like five minutes in, he's like, oh, I watched this on Pornhub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's that's yeah, that's a great idea. We got to do that eventually. That's incredible. And then we post we post our episode on Pornhub. Oh, my God. Yeah, we've I, we've talked about doing that, about putting our episodes up on Pornhub. Why not? There's a comic book podcast that posts their episodes on Pornhub. It's like they recap all of the CW dc shows and it's on pornhub that's i mean that's genius honestly yeah i mean it would certainly get us a new range of of listeners for sure and mandy would fit right in because there's some nudity in this movie some male frontal nudity which we don't get too often on the show or in general really would it be weird knowing people are touching themselves to the sound of our voices Mm, i like that that was so uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I know I know Nathan's about that life. Oh sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> so Nathan, uh, Mandy, yeah. tell me about the first time you saw this movie and how you felt about it and how you feel on this rewatch. So I remember when the trailer dropped for this movie. I I was all I knew was that it was. I think I saw it on Slash Film and they described it as Nick Cage in a doom metal revenge thriller. And I said, I'm in. Fuck yeah. So I pulled up the trailer. Spot on. I pulled up the trailer, watched it. And um, the trailer focuses really heavily on like the otherworldly imagery. There's a bunch of shots of the uh, like the animated sequences and all this stuff. But the the bit that sold me was one cage screaming the phrase crazy evil <laughs> and then it the trailer ended with the if i remember correctly the chainsaw duel and i was like yeah, I, yeah no this movie this is my most anticipated movie of next year <laughs> and uh unfortunately you know it 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 uh it had a limited release, and I but I remember pre-ordering the Blu-ray and having a movie night with friends, and we watched it at like eleven o'clock at night. We're all just like a, a little little tipsy, and it was the perfect atmosphere just to like get a group of people together and and just dive into not really ex- knowing what to expect other than you know, some crazy cage. And I think we were all pleasantly surprised that it was a different movie from what we expected. Yeah. It's not cage being cage as he typically is. No. And I would say even with the, uh, even with some of the bigger freak out moments in this movie, it is a much more measured performance than, than people would maybe expect from this type of film. With the exception of his delivery of the line, you ripped my shirt. You ripped my shirt. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) That's very true. Um, Although I will say I've heard really great things about um, Pig also, which I haven't seen yet. As have I. That's a good uh, point that we're doing this episode on the eve of uh, Pig's release. Yeah, yeah it, it seems like it's going to be uh, a good contender for this show also. Poss- possibly, yeah. I hear he even yeah, gets a more restrained I can see it. I can see it. performance in that than he does in this. So wow. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, this is one of the few times, I think, that none of us saw this in theaters. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, I did not. Yeah, like two of you have seen this for the first time for this episode. So, yeah. Mally, how about uh, how about you? How do you, how do you feel? About, I mean, you just finished it a few minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. no, we had, to put, we had to push the recording of this episode so I could finish the movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, so You're fresh. Like, again, like, I, I watched the trailer. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm down. And I just never, like, I was busy, never got a, like, super limited release, didn't get a chance. And then Dustin immediately in the classic Dustin thing after he saw it was like, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> like, dude, we got to do this on the podcast. I'm like, well, yeah. fucking spoilers, Dustin. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was like, all right, fine. Like, we're going to do it soon. I'll wait and watch it. And then it just like, we just never did the, this movie on the podcast. So I yeah. never watched it. Yeah, it just gets added to the list of hundreds of potential episodes so yeah and then finally like nathan locked it in so i was like okay watching it finally and uh holy fucking shit <laughs> it rules <laughs> movie fucking rules yeah it does. <laughs> it's so good yeah yeah i know i love this movie like all right uh established very well established i love a cult movie yeah yeah, yeah for love sure. a cult no, movie yeah. We should have done this last season when we were doing all the cult movies. Right. I know. I mean, that's I mean, that's why Halloween six is the best horror movie. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that and it inspired every movie after it. Yes, it did. Mm-hmm. Including Rise of Skywalker. Uh, go back to our episode to to discover <laughs> how Halloween 6 is the Rosetta Stone. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, if you ever listened to that episode, listener, we had some revelations on the episode where that movie essentially inspired <laughs> this, the Star Wars new trilogy. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Uh, chugging peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Michael, Mandy, you also just saw this for the first time. Tell me about your experience. Yeah, um, it like all you guys, it's been on my list for a bit, but I finally when I when you showed me the roster for the season, I was like, okay, this is it. I gotta watch it. So very similar to your experience, eleven o'clock. You know, a little bit drunk, watched it well into the morning, and it was original. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, to say the least. It was. Uh, I haven't seen a Nick Cage movie in forever. Um, and so it was a good like return to that. And it was, you know, yeah, absolutely. For sure. Uh, dude, if you're not cage, if you're not caging it up at least once every few months, man, you're doing something wrong, man. <laughs> yeah, I kind of realized that watching this one. <laughs> you got to you got to get that sweet, sweet release. <laughs> if you haven't seen Knowing with Nick Cage, you got to see that movie because it is. Oh, yeah. Bad shit. Fucking crazy is. Somehow one of the most violent movies I've ever seen. <laughs> you guys did that for the pod, right? Yes, we did. Yeah. Oh. Is that the one with the airplane? Yep. Okay. Gotcha. All of our pick me up films are just other Nick Cage movies, right? <laughs> Mine is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just going to make that assumption now. <laughs> um, well, listener, if you are not familiar with the project Mandy, um, why don't we talk about some of the details surrounding it to maybe catch you up to speed? So as we mentioned, the year is 2018. The director, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, but it's Panos Cosmatos. Yeah. Okay. He was uh, the director of Beyond the Black Rainbow, I think is what that other movie was called. Yeah, which I haven't seen, and I, I've heard that it's even like even more, you know, hashtag aesthetic than this one yeah, is. Like, I've it's a lot same. of style, but I still want to see it. I heard it's basically two people, and really only one of them talks. Interesting. Oh, so it's like early episodes of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he seems kind of, you know, Mally, maybe you can appreciate this too. He seems kind of like uh, he has the same kind of style as like the director of Under the Skin. Like very oh, sure. slow burn, very aesthetic, mm. aesthetically uh, inspired, you know. Um, the movie stars Nicolas Cage, uh, Andrea Riseborough, mm-hmm. Linus Roach, Richard Brake, and Bill Duke. Mm-hmm. Uh, the budget was six million dollars and only managed to gross one and a half million dollars worldwide Oof. and currently sits at a 90 percent on rotten tomatoes well deserved well earned well deserved andrea riseborough is just popping up everywhere in my life recently this is like the mm-hmm. third movie in a month i've watched her in oh really yeah she just keeps popping up man one of the funny things about her is she stars as mandy in mandy in this movie mm-hmm and in the same year, she starred as a woman named Nancy in a movie called Nancy. <laughs> so, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Son of a bitch. I thought a little back to back there. But yeah, I, the titular Nancy. Was she in Birdman? Yes. She mm-hmm. was in Birdman. Okay, gotcha. I was like, I remember her from somewhere. And Mal, you'll appreciate this too. I don't know if you remember, but she was also in past episode Never Let Me Go. Son of a bitch. <laughs> so she, yeah, this is her, at least the second time she's appeared on our on our playlist. So wow. Um, and I will say she does appear. She will appear again this season. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, she will. I actually made that note too. Um, she was also in underrated, uh, underrated Tom Cruise sci-fi action or Oblivion, which I liked a lot. Yep. Yeah, dude, Oblivion's not bad. Right. <laughs> I need to rewatch yeah, it. I watched it cool. once, and it is sci-fi by numbers, but it's it's. Re- I liked it a lot. It is. It is. Yeah. I need to rewatch it. I've only seen it once, and I was kind of yeah. It's fine. Yeah. So, you know, I, I forgot to mention the first time I saw Mandy. Um, I put it on. I think kind of similar too. I think it was late night. Mm-hmm. Me and Priscilla put it on, and we both kind of fell asleep during it. But I think that was I because I wasn't prepared for the slow burn that is this movie like it's right. very slow paced and so it didn't keep my attention very well especially the first like hour is very hypnotic yeah. it's not the movie you think it's going to be and then it becomes a better an elevated version of the movie that you think it is no it's this is two movies i'll say yeah, yeah. that that last that last hour does not burn slowly at all <laughs> no for no. sure no. No, this is two movies. I checked. The title card doesn't show up for the first hour and 15 minutes. It, one of the boldest fucking choices. <laughs> yes. And it's yep. like the first hour and 15 is the Mandy movie. 
Yeah. And then second is, is the Red Red's movie. Revenge. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you get two movies with the price of one. Well, it's funny because like the title doesn't come up for that long, but there are other like almost like chapter title cards that yeah. do pop up before that. Yeah, Children of the New Dawn, The Shadow Mountains, 1983 AD. Gorgeous Those graphic really work. Cool cards. Yeah. Gorgeous yeah. graphic work. Um, hopefully we might see some of that in the trailer. So uh, you guys ready to, uh, to check out the trailer? Let's do it. Audio podcast. Shut up. All right, here we go. That score is so good. One of uh, Johan Johansson's final scores. Yep. Fuck everything about that bedroom. <laughs> Dark embrace. Tell you what, though, Mandy's got a fucking style for t-shirts. Yeah. Yeah, she knows how to wear a Black Sabbath shirt, for sure. Oh, yeah. Strange and eternal. Don't sleep on the Motley Crue when she wears in the gas station. Oh, Motley oh, Crue one's great. Do you know what to do? You know, we kind of talked about this before, but when they use the, the term visionary director, it often doesn't really suit me. I feel like, I feel like he's a visionary director. <laughs> You're a special one. Nothing like a home invasion courtesy of Slipknot. I <laughs> right? God, that was so intense. Yeah, every time the pinheaded one was on, on screen, I was just like, I did my time. <laughs> This is a great trailer. <laughs> it's a gr yeah, it is. So what you gonna do with that thing? We're going hunting. So what you hunting? Crazy, Crazy evil. evil. <laughs> you think you're so? This is kind of like a very Stranger Things esque I'll score to me. <laughs> sure, which I love. Fucking Richard Brake killing it. Richard Brake crushes in this movie. In his one scene, he's so good. Yeah. Unsung character actor, for sure. For sure. It glowed from within. Strange and eternal. I love the metal font. God, I miss this. I miss grindcore fonts, man. <laughs> Yeah, trailer uh, cuts out while he's screaming and holding a chainsaw. I'm just like, yeah, okay. I'm. This, I guess this is a good time to. This, you guys have probably mentioned this on the show before, but like, how do we all feel about the man, the myth, the legend, Nicolas Cage? Love him. Yeah. 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 I. It's so weird because all these reviews have been coming out of Pig, and they're like, oh, he's giving this really layered, measured performance, and. And I'm like, guys, Nicolas Cage has always been good. No, he's he's an Oscar yeah, winner. Like, have you guys never seen? Like bad lieutenant port of call New Orleans. Right. That's a layered performance. It's an insane performance. But the thing is, like, and I think actually, I remember Roger Ebert infamously gave His bad soul lieutenant is still dancing. Uh, he infamously gave bad lieutenant like a three and a half stars. Jesus. And yeah, and he <laughs> said it was like on his top ten of the year. And he said people don't understand that Nicolas Cage is like the most fearless performer that we have. He really is. Yeah. And I yeah. think that there is some truth to that. Like he's not afraid of looking ugly or insane or. And that's not to say all of his choices make sense, but he's fucking going for it with all of them. And he doesn't, he's not one of those like method actors who makes other people suffer for his performances. True. No, I think Nick Cage is, is truly like a phenomenal actor when he wants to be. And yeah, I also think he is one of the few actors that has self-awareness about the projects he's doing. Like for I sure. think he knows what he's getting into when he does movies like there's very rarely a time where like his performance doesn't lost. fit yeah it's yeah. very few times where i'm not like no he knows exactly what this movie is and yeah. like this performance is great i'm sure pig's great um the one he won the oscar for what was it uh leaving las vegas L yeah i mean yeah. let's get it out of the way now guys favorite nick cage film oh um 
<sighs> That's a loaded question. <laughs> yeah, man. Do you want me to go first? What do you mean by favorite? Like most enjoyable, or you think it's best performance? Or L let's let's go most rewatch. Like what? Which mm. one have you watched the most? Face Off. Ooh. Definitely National Treasure for me. <laughs> okay. Oh okay. yeah, dude, I love more National Treasure than I care to admit. I think I've seen it like five or six times. Now, see, Face Off was my first choice, but I it dawned on me that I think the Nick Cage film that I have watched the most. Gone in 60 seconds. Oh, I love really fun. I think his performance in that is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was a movie of my childhood. I love that movie. Dude, Memphis Reigns, that's a classic character, right? He there. only has like one real Nick Cage freak out in that movie. Not right. really either. It's pretty subdued. Is it with when they're listening to Low Rider? <laughs> no, I think the part when he finally delivers uh the beat up car that was it, what's the name? Uh Eleanor? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you wanted a fucking car I gave him that. Okay. Wait, yeah, yeah. he's like, I'm tired, I'm a little wired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh Raising Arizona's great. Yeah. Uh his performance in Wild at Heart is mm -hmm. great, regardless of what, how you feel about that movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, Vampire's Kiss is fantastic. Vampire's Kiss. I think Con Air, Con Air, I think is probably Con Air is a is a gem of a film. Yeah. Extraordinary oh, yeah. cast. If it's not Con Air, the one that I think is the most rewatchable for me, just because it's such an insane movie, is Knowing. Because oh, that movie is fucking crazy. <laughs> sure, <laughs> that movie was fucking wild. Before we start. Uh, this is a newer segment that we've introduced on the show, the drink of the movie. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Now, I had a couple of recipes I was looking at. There was one that was interesting. It was called like the Pink Flamingo. And I was like, oh, this movie is extremely pink. That would feel like <laughs> Sure. Um, but in doing my research, I found out that when this movie premiered at the Alamo Draft House, they had a special menu. Um, a, they gave boxed mac and cheese. Amazing. As the food, <laughs> which we'll get into. Did they have Jeremiah sandwiches? <laughs> <laughs> they also had a drink called the Unhade, Unhinged Cage, right? Oh, great. Love okay. It. So I'm going to list off the recipe here, and it's me and Michael are going to try it live on the air. Okay. I feel like it's just a four horseman. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's, it's interesting because Alamo Draft House doesn't even have the actual recipe on their website anymore, but I found uh -huh. this blog that had it. And it's going to be interesting because it doesn't have specifics. It just says one part Jägermeister, one, oh my <laughs> one God. part tequila Blanco, one part Christ. Irish whiskey, one part sweet vermouth, and one part fireball whiskey. Now, no, what the Jesus Christ? Fuck? We're going to try this on the air. And by part, I don't know what that means. So what I did is I bought those little you individual... You just did 20% of each? <laughs> I just got one of those little individual bottles of alcohol. So we're just going to make them and then split it between us two, okay? Holy Christ. Oh, my God. From the people that have tried this, they have said, if you were going to put Nick Cage into a drink, into a glass, this is exactly what it would be. So I'm, I'm interested. So while I do that, while I make the drinks for us, Michael, Nathan, Mally, you guys just talk amongst yourselves and I'll be right back. Okay. I, I'm i so concerned about what's about to happen. See, guys, I totally thought we were just going to slam a fifth of vodka. <laughs> I, I thought we were just going to get shitty vodka and just go to town. But he, he waited to uh, tell me what it was. Yeah, oh, wow. I, I, assume, I, assume, I assume the drink was just going to be like vo straight vodka. Straight vodka. I was going to say a um, another great possibility would be a white Russian because it looks like the stuff that homeboy like slurps down the LSD. Ah, uh, true. Oh, my true. God. Yeah. And then he Nick Cage does it, but it's just like a fingertip, which. Yeah. And then he <laughs> trips that and then he just drinks half of it right jesus yeah i went with so while watching the film i ate an entire pizza and drank two beers and i'm finishing a third right now i just this seemed like a pizza and beer movie to me i don't yeah, know what, man. what kind of beer just simple rugged i'm going with a dos Equis oh classic because right. it is it's what was in my fridge because i have not gone grocery shopping since i returned to atlanta so oh, the only boy. things in my fridge currently besides condiments are a couple Lacroix some beer and um i think a gatorade all right well you got liquids for days so you know yo we good we well, i'm yeah thriving. i had uh pbr with mine nice. i just felt nice. like light you know beer light trash beer would be awesome yes did the vibe yeah yeah this has a very this has a very like beer with the boys vibe for like the first <laughs> First, like, 20 minutes of the movie when it's just them out in the woods. Yeah. Uh, you know, f having a beer on the helicopter. Rejecting the beer. I, I got up 
five minutes into the movie and went and put on a flannel shirt. I was like, this just feels <laughs> right. Yeah. So I just wanted to just uh, pop in real quick to say the sweet vermouth we have is going to be the most interesting part because it did not come in like the little 50 milliliter tiny bottles. Okay. This is just a wine sized bottle of vermouth. So I have to guess Ugh. how much we're going to need for this. So just to say. Dustin. Why don't you take one of the empty bottles and fill it with sweet vermouth? I wish he could hear you, uh, but he doesn't have his earphones. In. Okay. Well, I wish you guys could also see the faces he's making as he's combining all of these. Jokes. I'd rather well, not. I've, I've seen <laughs> Dustin's face. Not for me. Yeah, this is intense. I will say besides Nick Cage's performance, what was your guys's favorite of, you know, all the amazing other characters? Man, I like I said, I think I think Andrea Ricebro is really great uh, with she she does so much with just glances. Dude, she's she does that in every movie she's in. Her eyes are incredible. They are genuinely incredible. And we have that in amazing little scar that draws extra attention to her eyes. And like, I don't want to I don't want to spoil the film that she pops up in later in this season, but uh huh. Mm -hmm. Her performance in it is so good. That's what I've heard. It's absurd. Yeah. All right, guys. Now, this is right now it's in the shaker. So I don't even know what color this is. We are going <laughs> to be able to hear your insides gurgling. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I got to tell you. <laughs> it smells bad. Just no. No, it doesn't smell too bad. But the Jaeger is kind of overpowering. Uh, Michael, you take us just a, a whiff. Ooh, man, it is overpowering. Yeah, it mostly smells like... Yeah, I haven't had Jaeger since I was like 21 and in a band. <laughs> chug it, chug it, chug it. Th this mixture, remind us what's in it again. All right, so the recipe <clears throat> is... Uh, I just love that it says one part Jaegermeister, one part tequila blanco, uh -huh. one part Irish whiskey, one part sweet vermouth, and one part fireball. Yeah, I think that's what the water is made of on that beach that makes you old. <laughs> <laughs> there's too much fucking sand on this beach <laughs> i hate sand it's rough and it gets everywhere yeah what would uh carl havoc look like on that beach <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, let's take a guess what hue what color do you think is going to pour out of this bottle grimace <laughs> brown, purple. Just be for brown. Sure. jaeger it's going to be purplish Jaeger, right? Uh, yeah, like, it's going to look like Grimace. Yeah. It's going to be deep purple, which is, I think is fitting. So, yeah. All right. Bam, Here we go. Bam, bam. Smoke bam. on the water. Oh, okay. it's like no, it's like a, like a caramel whiskey color. Oh, oh boy. I was closest. Okay. Woo! So they said this was a shot, but <laughs> this is... <laughs> This filled up a rock glass. <laughs> That's All because right. you can't measure. <laughs> That's because there is no measurements. It says one part. <laughs> well, okay, hang on. But I mean, if there's so five parts, then you it knew be like... it was supposed to end up being one shot, right? But you knowingly put in more <laughs> five hundred <laughs> milliliters. I will say this. <clears throat> I will say this too. We'll try this. If it's not good, we can maybe try adding some more vermouth to it. If not, I totally respect your decision to sit this one out. <laughs> Oh, it, Dustin right. can't. Dustin has to finish it on air. That pour even sound. That pour sounded thick. Ooh. Dustin's got to finish his creation. It sounded heavy, right? It's it's thick. It's sludgy. <laughs> oh god! Oh, like 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 the soundtrack. No, no, no. I'm just yeah, yeah. All right. So we'll take a sip. No, we're not doing shots. We'll take a sip and we'll oh, we'll see Nathan, how we feel about keep it. Going, okay. Man. All right. Cheers, man. Cheers. It's not bad. I don't believe you. <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah, yeah I don't believe it, that it for a kinda second. It tastes like it kind of tastes like nothing. Yeah. What? Oh, what, what do you mean on? it tastes like nothing? No, I think that's because it burnt your fucking taste buds off. It's got a terrible aftertaste. I'm going back for seconds. What? No! <laughs> I'm going back for seconds. Oh, Michael is too. Don't do that! Like, there's hints of Jaeger. There's hints of Jaeger and there's hints of Fireball. But other than that... Can't huh. Anything else. No. Weird. That guy lied. This does not taste like cage in a glass. Your esophagus is going to be so scarred. <laughs> I think this would be a sneaky drink, though. Like, you you take... If you do... You fucking think? Because <laughs> it's mostly alcohol. <laughs> the vermouth is the only thing that's not whiskey or tequila. Or, like, I don't taste any of the tequila. No, not at all. I feel like it's almost like a like it's just there to blend uh -huh. the whiskeys together. But yeah, when you have Cointreau and you have... And I've got some lime juice if we want to add that, too. I still have some left over from the Cosmo. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my god! I tell you what, I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna try okay. throughout the episode and see how we feel. Maybe I'll get unhinged by the end of it. Maybe that's why they call it that because <laughs> you don't realize how fucking dangerous this drink is <laughs> until you finish it. Right? Yeah. Cage had to finish a whole bottle of vodka before he was ready to kill bikers. Oof. You know, I I couldn't remember for some reason. I thought he was because I remember that scene, and I did not remember it was vodka. I always thought it was. Like he was chugging Jack Daniels or something, which would be the obvious. Vodka that he keeps in the bathroom. In his shag carpeted bathroom. Oh, that was. <laughs> Can you imagine? That was the shag car. The shag carpet being in the bathroom is the grossest part of this. Yes. Movie. That's exactly what my yes. girlfriend said. Yeah, that's what I wrote down. I'm like, dude, the 70s. We were all about fucking carpets and bathrooms is one place where if you're not doing wood floor or tile, you are fucking, fucking up. up. Yeah. Right. Right. Like the the toilet was on tile though. Right. It was like the it what was little square. Up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but man, if you got a heavy flow and get a big splash, like what you know. But not even that. The carpet that would have been there, they put on the toilet lid. So right. it doesn't really help. That's that a much. good point. <laughs> I will say I related to the bathroom scene because that's exactly how scary. I felt. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> That's exactly how I felt earlier this week when I got off a red eye flight at 7 a.m. and had to start work at 9 a.m. Right. <laughs> Ooh. Just got I say home. The third sip is not as good. Screamed in my bathroom, <laughs> chugged some vodka, and got to work. <laughs> got to work. <sighs> All right, let's get into the movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, before he blacks out. Yeah, for real. Now I regret the third sip. With every other sip, it gets worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah I that's bet. gonna continue. You had a, you had a, a. a, a inkling of a thought there nathan what, what were you gonna say oh i was gonna say speaking of work we we meet nicholas cage on the job yeah uh, i was gonna do the same thing just get us into the get us into the movie <laughs> yeah great absolutely. segue buddy thanks man great segue i tried yeah i i do have one question yeah uh, before we really get into the details of it um <clears throat> can any movie any movie be under two hours anymore? Oh, sure. <laughs> Can any movie... Why is Space Jam 2 fucking two hours long? <laughs> why? Where is it really? What, yes, where are these 90-minute movies gone? Which is, which is so funny because the first Space Jam is 69 mo- minutes with credits. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. why, why? Why? I mean, this movie, I feel like I get the, the aesthetic, but I'm like... You don't. You, there's 30 minutes of this movie you could trim up. Yeah. There is, but I'm glad it's not. This is one of the few movies where I I am actually happy with every lingering shot and weird hypnotic focus. And, yeah. Same. I, I don't. I would miss that 30 minutes. I feel like there's like five percent of every scene that I'm like, this is a little too long. Like I I enjoy the longer takes, but I'm like, yeah, there's some of it that we can like. There's moments though, like you know, we we hang on him her coming up out of the water and walking towards him and he's just in awe of her and it's almost like the flames part for her like mm-hmm. just the, giving it that long focus you get so much more out of like yep. like i was saying right when you were when you were making the drink andrea rice bro's eyes are so hypnotic mm-hmm. like anytime there's a moment to just kind of take in her features and the the like the, the the hold that she has over people in this movie, I think it's just, it's really cool. Like, I think it's a really interesting choice. I agree. I thought the same thing, but I think you need the extra long takes to just get into the world. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. Sure. Sure. I mean, this movie is psychedelic as fuck, and that's kind yes. of the point. So, I, I mean, I'm, like I said, I don't mind. I mean, we start with a we we start with a King Crimson song. That's like a <laughs> statement of intent. Like we're gonna watch we're gonna watch a blues like uh, metal psychedelic movie for the you know the next two hours for sure. I mean, I I will say, I, if if Nick Cage was oh you don't like that third that's tip true. yeah. That's <laughs> oh, Jesus, I will say if Nick Cage wasn't an actor. I feel like the career he would have would be a lumberjack. Sure. Like he, he seems like he would fit in right, right as rain. It, where does this movie take place? This feels like it's almost like, uh, like n- almost up towards Alaska, like that kind of Pacific Northwest. Somewhere, somewhere near the Shadow Mountains, Dustin. Pay attention, jackass. <laughs> aren't, yeah, aren't the Shadow Mountains a real place, though? I have no clue. Yeah, it's in the Mojave Desert. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's in California. Uh, but, wait, what? <laughs> I mean, that would make sense. Upper California is mostly wooded areas anyway. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, I guess I was wrong. But it also, like, as the movie goes on, it becomes more of this otherworldly, fanciful location where you're just, like, not sure if we're seeing what's really there or if cage is 
you know, acid trip slash uh, slash, you know, mental breakdown is progressing. Exactly. Uh, I was going to say before we poured the this drink out of the shaker, I thought it was going to be like that uh, moonshine jar that he he takes the super drugs. Like That's what I was expecting. <laughs> that's exactly what Nathan. <laughs> that's, that's what I was saying is I was saying the other the other drink of the episode would be a white Russian. Oh, yeah. If we ever do Big Lebowski on the show, white Russian is the drink. <laughs> <laughs> My f- my first official note for this movie was yeah. sleeping in a big room of windows. Fuck that. Right. I agree. Yeah, that's terrible. That's, that's like uh, hell. No. What's the girl from uh, Drag Me to Hell? The the lead actress sure. her sleeping with the window open. Fuck that. Like no, no, <laughs> no. One hundred percent. Like absolutely not. I, I'll pop a window open, sure. But also, yeah. I live on the fucking sixth floor. It's fine. Yeah, if you're on the first floor, no. It, it gives Panos Cosmatos an, an, an opportunity to uh, put that Aurora effect inside the room because otherwise he wouldn't be allowed to. That's Fair why point. it's so it's so shocking, so jarring. Like the first time we see the inside of Jeremiah's house, mm-hmm. like where there's just natural lighting, because otherwise we've seen Nick Cage and Andrea Riceboro in their bed and there's still just like flickering Aurora lights. Yeah, coming from outside. So my first official note was: uh, Did you guys recognize who produced, helped produce this movie? Uh, I missed that. Elijah was, Wood. Uh, yeah, yeah, Elijah Wood. Elijah. Oh, Wood. Yes. Yeah. Right. Oh my God, I was guessing. <laughs> it kind of <laughs> makes sense. Like, I feel like Elijah Wood in his later career. Well, no, I mean, yeah, he's he like he started that production company years ago that only does like weird shit like this. Him and uh, Radcliffe, man, they're both. Oh yeah, yeah, they both escaped their their earlier. Mm-hmm. you know ips and we're able to make right. careers out of it so that's good for them he um elijah wood apparently helped uh get nicholas cage the the role because uh uh the director had originally approached cage to play jeremiah sand and he said that he was more interested in playing mm-hmm. red oh and wow. then after they had like they couldn't come to terms on it and then elijah wood like arranged a meeting for the three of them and then they all just kind of talked it through and panos realized oh okay this guy totally gets what I'm going for. Then I'll, I'll, I'll trust him with the part. I kind of want to see a remake of Manny, same cast, but just switch. But him and <laughs> yeah, just yeah. switch. Linus the... Roach. Yes. <laughs> I feel like he'd rock that too. Yeah. I feel like I could see Nick Cage as a cult leader. Oh, yeah. Why not? Yeah, why not? Or remake Bad Times at the El Royale and put him in the Chris Hemsworth role. <laughs> I, I would watch that. Right? I'd watch that movie. Yeah. I'm looking at the uh, IMDb page for Mandy right now, and the second, I- the first image is red with blood all over his face from the chemist scene. Yeah. The second image is Vince Neil. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> at like looking looking bored at the premiere. Oh, I guess they invited him because of the Motley Crue shirt. Maybe it's so fucking funny though. It like that's the second image on the IMDb page. That's funny. <laughs> oh my god, you're right. It is. What the hell? <laughs> I want to. I'm sure you guys mentioned this while I was off there, but Andrea Riseborough, <clears throat> I think, is a fantastic actress. I think she's, she's incredible in this movie. Yeah, I will say one thing. I think I find appealing about her. She has that same sort of androgynous kind of aura to her that like Tilda yeah. Swinton has. Like sure. a lot of actresses don't have that, and I, I appreciate it in this movie, especially when they do, you know, the psychedelic blending between her and uh, Linus Roach during when he's giving his speech. That's- that shot is incredible. Like so it, it's so Very. well done. It's so unnerving. But it works well. They have like the same eye shape and everything. It sneaks like, up on you too. Yeah. Like that's it's so incredible. No, yeah. I was just I was actually you know I, as the movie was going on, I like to you know take notes in real time rather than sort them out later. But one thing I was thinking sure. about was like you know when Nick Cage and her are kind of like laying in bed together, I'm like <clears throat> you know Nick Cage has we talked about this aura of like being this manic crazy motherfucker. I feel like in real life, he is probably one of the most personable and likable yeah. actors. Like, I feel like he is mm-hmm. for sure down to earth. Like, I think I feel like he is like this. Like, he's so tender in the scene. Yeah, I do. I feel like that would be he's like very timid. I feel like he would be co- cool to like have a beer with and just sit and talk. And like you would get a lot out of that conversation. I mean, he named his he named a he named his kid after fucking right. Superman. Yeah. So and it, I mean, Hello. he took his name after a Marvel character. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> True. That's right. Uh, is it Luke Cage? Luke Cage. Yeah. Luke Cage. Yeah. A lot of people mistake that for Johnny Cage, but yep. no, it's Luke Cage. I love the conversation that they have where she's she's talking about how much she loves Jupiter and she loves the she she. There's like a storm that's always brewing, and mm-hmm. if it wanted to, it could consume everything. Yep. And I feel like she's describing Red. You know this. Yeah. This scarred veteran who 
you know, it takes one. Is he a veteran? Because I know that's like hinted at. I think that's the implication. Yeah. 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 Especially with Bill Duke's character. Yeah, I kind of assumed he was. So we were thinking, what, Vietnam or? Yeah. Okay. No, I, I agree. And I also like, you know, when she asks him what's his favorite planet, and he has the Galactus line. Galactus. It's kind of true because he comes in at the end and just destroys everything. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's pretty great. And, of course, the final shot of the movie, which we'll talk about when we get there. Yeah. No, I, I yeah, I, I feel like Nick Cage is certainly somebody I would love to he would be one of the few actors that I would actually be starstruck by meeting. Oh, just sure. Be fascinated with, with him. Did you guys get this feeling too? This movie feels very, uh, very much like a like a It Follows in terms of like the atmosphere and the score and the camera work. Like, yeah, for I don't sure. know how you would describe this kind of movie. I mean, you could say it's oh, it's all aesthetic, but it's not. There is substance there. I don't know how I would describe like those type of movies. But I'm I'm fucking in on it. It is. I mean, it feels it feels like a tone poem. Like it feels mm-hmm. almost like we're watching the inside of a of a musician's head. Like yes. it, <laughs> it feels like it feels like a King Crimson album brought to life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I agree. It really does. I will say I like this movie a lot more than it follows. Really? Yeah, I thought it follows. I I I think I it, think they're so I think they're so different though. I yeah I think it follows is fine. I was gonna say comparing them. Eh. Hmm. I just rewatched it not too long ago. I, I really dig it. I mean, but but I see what you're saying. It's it's that 80s atmosphere and synth and all that stuff, too. Yeah. Yeah. I also don't like the It Follows score that much. Yeah. I'll say it. <laughs> OK. I, f- fair. Fair enough. <laughs> Which was our wasn't that our music for a while? <laughs> yes, it was. It was our yeah. uh, outdoor music. <laughs> yeah. Um. There we go. <laughs> uh, Nathan, I know you know this, but huh? uh, Mally. I think, no, Michael, you might have been asking me before we started recording. Um, Linus Roach, the cult leader, Jeremiah, you asked me what movie (laughs) he's been in. Yep, yep. Can anyone besides Batman Begins, which is where he's from, he's Thomas Wayne, Uh can anyone name a single other movie he's been in? I can't. These are the only two I recognize him from. I feel like he is a great actor. Why is he not in more stuff? Yeah, he's... He's been in something else. I just can't think of what it is. Like, is his agent dead at the wheel? Like, why is this guy not getting <laughs> he's work? He's so good. Yeah. He's so good. And this is pretty fun, too, that we have both him and Richard Brake in this movie. So we've got Thomas Wayne showing his dick. And then we have Joe Chill. Oh, sure. Giving a much more reserved performance than he does in Batman McCann. True. Yeah, he's sorry about what he did. <laughs> it's a great line for Batman the Kid. Oh right. Yeah, fuck. I can't think I can't I cannot think of another thing he was in. Apparently he's in he's in like two seasons of Vikings. Okay. Uh he's been in uh a season of whole he's done twenty three episodes of Homeland. He seems like he'd be going like a sword and sandals kind of thing, like yeah. Game of Thrones. Yeah. Sure. Did anyone else catch the little uh the little um cameo or not really cameo the homage that of where red and mandy live oh crystal lake they live near crystal lake yep crystal lake yeah i just thought it was funny when they say that there's like a stinger in the score (laughs) yeah it's like yeah (laughs) and i was one of the one of the black skulls kind of looks like jason like he's right it's in shadows a lot but he kind of looks like he has a hockey mask on which i thought was pretty funny dude when the black skulls rolled up all i could think of because the first time you see them, they pull up on, like, fucking four-wheelers, basically. Mm-hmm, like ATVs. <laughs> um, dude, all I could think of was, I think it was, like, summer 2019, there was a fucking four-wheeler gang wreaking havoc through Atlanta. Really? <laughs> and it was fucking what is chaos. Atlanta? but awesome like dude you would just be like sitting at an intersection and then 20 motherfuckers on atvs would just come cruising by that's insane just like wrecking shit it was awesome uh michael i'm gonna call a truce i don't think i can finish this drink <laughs> yeah that, you guys should have seen his reaction oh. on that last <laughs> Oof. anyway so yeah we're calling uh, unhinged cage a dud a dud like i'm not oh uh, no fuck <laughs> that i think you're oh. the dud buddy i'm gonna finish mine Oh, that was just Dustin. To be He's fair, you had more than I did <laughs> when I poured it in. I mean, I had more than you did. You are a fucking champion, sir. Yeah, he has almost finished it. Bravo. I mean, I came here fully expecting to slam. <laughs> so, I should have got. You know, my my backup was gonna be moonshine because this feels like a very moonshiny kind of movie. And right. I have that. I might break out in a minute, but oof. oh, you're so you're you're gonna jump from that to moonshine. Tonight's gonna be great for you. Yeah, yeah. When the children of the new dawn rolled up for the first time. My girlfriend remarked, this is so perfect. Every member of the cult looks like they'd be extras at Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I was just like, oh I don't God. know why that makes sense, but it sure does. Dude, mullet dude for sure. Yeah. Dude. Well, also Porky. 
mm-hmm. or Porker. Yeah. Whatever yeah. one it was. Oh, yeah. Porker looks also looks like the son of um he looks like Kenny Powers' nephew on Eastbound and Down. <laughs> I was gonna say he looks like the kid from Bad Santa. Oh, sure. Sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Cheddar Goblin. <laughs> Cheddar Goblin. So, Cheddar Goblin. Do you guys know the little extra uh information about this? Like who directed that? commercial uh, you know, it's, it's the guy well, who did... before you before you name it nathan because oh, i know yeah. you know yeah can you guys take just a wild guess at a, another famous you something you've seen definitely okay that's that weird that yeah. they would have directed um and this this is who did the we're talking about like the little like commercial thing yeah, yeah, commercial yeah. that plays yeah. on the who TV. directed the commercial oh it definitely felt like a 1 a.m. I'm up way too late and Adult Swim is on. You're, yes. you're like so in the pocket. Those, I don't know. You were so in the pocket of it. Uh, but I'll tell you, it's the same guy that uh, created Too Many Cooks. <laughs> too many co- oh my god! I remember when you and Mitchell played that at work. All those <laughs> so good. Ago. Jesus Christ. Too Many Cooks is amazing. Too many cooks can spoil the broth. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, he brought him in to direct that Cheddar oh, Goblin cool. commercial. Such a it, it's such a weird. Uh, juxtaposition we've just cage has just watched mandy burned alive yeah he has bled enough that he's been able to pull himself out of the barbed wire that they've tied him up with oh he stumbles. he holds her body while it crumbles into dust and then he stumbles into the house bleeding and dazed the cheddar goblin commercial is playing on television where children are getting vomited on by this like little hobgoblin looking <laughs> thing goblin. And he it, genuinely, I think this is the best acting in the film. Like maybe mm. is the is his dazed uh, utterance of Cheddar Goblin. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> it is like he's just trying to latch on to something in the room sure, to like ground sure. him. It's such a weirdly haunting moment. No, I think you got to have that commercial right there because you just went through an hour of trauma. So you need something to, yeah. Let's let's discuss that hour. Sure. Um, let's talk. I have a note that just in all caps says, fuck, big wasp. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Giant wasp. Yeah. Terrifying. Dude, it's a fucking like, do you know what that is? It's a fucking it's like the most metal fucking animal alive. It's a fucking tarantula hawk is Jeez. what it's called. Is that real? Is that a, Oh, fuck God, that's a real that. thing. Fucking sting. It'll like fucking like they literally it's a wasp that hunts tarantulas. Oh, Holy my fuck. God. I just so, looked it up and I want to kill all of them. Dude. No. So like, it, no. listen to this no. shit. <laughs> it, pa- it paralyzes the tarantula and then lays an egg Ugh. inside the tarantula. No, shut the fuck up. (laughs) (laughs) And then when the fucking dude, when the larva hatches, it eats itself out of the still living host. Fuck. So it's it is the most metal. You're right. Tell me that's not the most metal fucking animal. Of course, that's why. And how was it? (laughs) Oh, my. It's dude. The moment that popped up on screen, I'm like, nope, nope. Absolutely fucking not. Fuck. And I, uh, man, I love uh linus roach's monologue is insane yeah. about jeremiah like he he's like he does this whole thing that's sort of patrick bateman-esque where he asks her how she feels about the carpenters he thinks they're beautiful they're wonderful you don't have to finish the drink sorry i'm gonna finish the drink or the drink i'm gonna finish the drink yes you do oh uh, there's just a look of pain uh. <laughs> but no nathan i agree he he's like doing this like patrick bateman meets charlie manson type thing right but then he oh, it's very charlie manson but he like yeah. he talks up the carpenters and then puts on his own album and but says I'm this better. is better yeah <laughs> And by the way, it's a bold move. Jeremiah Sand, Linus Roach has recorded an entire Jeremiah Sand album that came out last year. Yep. yep. It exists. Um, produced by the dude who's done like three Sun O records. Oh my that god. That makes that a makes lot sense. of sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I will say he has one line in there that where he just says, his hot loving light. That's Jesus semen, right? I guess. <laughs> probably. Jesus like, semen. yeah, I guess. It is. But he's He's so good. He's so pathetic and scary at the same time when he starts screaming, don't look at me. And she's laughing at him. It is such a. Oh, tr- but he keeps going, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut yeah. up. Yeah. It's such a fuck yeah moment when she starts laughing. He goes from like full on like goodbye horses yeah. right. to like just this pathetic little shell of a man. And it's fucking brilliant. 
It's so good. He's like, you want to fuck with me? <laughs> and then he burns her alive. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> she looks so demonic when she's laugh or like laughing at him too. It's great. I had texted Dustin and Nathan while I was watching the movie saying, all right, guys, I have one critique of this movie so far. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. What is it? No way that fire was hot or burned long enough to completely result in her body being ash. Oh, sure. That's not scientifically possible. <laughs> Revelation. I love this soundboard. Thank you. I think that's more of this movie's selective realism. It has to be a constant... I I did the I did the research. I did the work, guys. Oh boy. Okay. Oh, I did, did some research work? too. <laughs> yeah, Matley's doing work. Hold on. He lit oh, some on. on. <laughs> a crematorium is at a constant temperature of fourteen hundred to eighteen hundred degrees in a controlled environment for three hours, constantly being pumped full of fuel and stuff. The average the average gas <laughs> fire is between 500 and 1500 degrees up until the gas burns out. No fucking way her body's ash. So what you're saying is... No fucking way. This movie got some of the science wrong? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so LSD doesn't make you invincible? Well, now... I mean, it does if I you're not haven't pussy done about that. It. I have not done that research. <laughs> I have not done that research. You know what? It's funny you say that about the fire, because I actually did some research about uh, the end of the movie. Um, which we can kind of talk about real quick just because this is a great segue. But like sure. when he crushes Linus Roach's head. Oh, yeah. Like I actually did some research like that. What would it take to crush a human skull with your bare hands? And basically the consensus is it's not really possible. <laughs> you can't. Right. He's, they're like. Why that pressure? Well, because I actually did some research. It was when Game of Thrones, the character The Mountain does that. Yeah. Crushes somebody's head. Right. Yeah. That they you were, can't crush someone's head? You, not, you cannot with your bare hands squeeze hard enough to crush a skull for it to pop like a watermelon like that. Right. They're like, even like, a guy as big as The Mountain can't do that. Because like the, yeah. thickest, the thickest piece of bone in the human body is basically the skull. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not mine, buddy. Like, so... <laughs> Nathan's got that soft head. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. actually like from certain heights, like if you're jumping from a certain height, they recommend falling, like letting your shoulder take the first hit and your head take the second hit. Oof. Because at a, from a certain height, if you try to land on your legs or on your butt, it'll just shoot your fucking pelvis and spine up through your organs. Oh, fuck. Like uh, Will Smith in Independence Day. <laughs> you jumped from that, that space. Yeah, exactly. Oh, right. Yeah, but his legs explode. No, actually, it's funny you mentioned that. I did some research, too, about that. They're like, the best way you can survive a fall from great heights is to be drunk. Because when you're drunk, you don't tense up as much. Yeah, and you have the reason you break your bones when you fall from great heights is because you tense up. So you're, it's like yeah. t holding a piece of paper taut and yeah. trying to rip it. It's a lot easier than if it's just, you know... Let's loosen your hands. So that's why most people break their bones because they're tensed up too tight. Yeah, and canonically in the Avengers, Falcon is always drunk just in case, <laughs> just in case his jetpack gives out. I, I watched Falcon Winter Soldier. I'm pretty sure that's accurate. Do you remember, did you guys ever watch Due Date? That happens in Due Date? Zach Galifianakis has a whole thing about it because he was like asleep when they get into a car accident. And then oh, oh out, he I've only seen that movie once. Up. I don't remember. But yeah, Mally did work. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. We have we have Cheddar Goblin, we have Bathroom Vodka freak out, and naturally the next thing that he has to do is find Bill Duke and get his weapons. Uh, and Bill Duke is always good. Yes. Before yeah. we get to Bill Duke, though, I have to say, I think the bathroom scene is the best acting he does in this movie because yeah. he really, he, he comes close to crossing that line into Nick Cage caging out. Yeah. But I, I think it, this is genuine grief and anger and like... Oh, yeah. It was captured in the one shot, too. I was blown yes. away. Not many actors can do that. I mean, it's I mean, think about how many times they may have done that shot, too. And like he's not spitting that. I'm sure it's water, but he's not spitting that out. He's like chugging that. Yes. Vodka. It painful. Yeah. He's like holding his throat as he's doing yeah. it. He's pouring it on his like the wound in his side. And he, yeah, he's pushing it down his throat. And he's doing this. He's doing this interesting thing where and I, I read that he had a screaming coach on I this too. movie. I read that, too. He. He as he's doing the freak out, it's it's almost like he's doing scales, yeah. like he's warming up for a metal show. So he's literally going like he's going like, oh, uh, uh, yeah, uh. there is one of his little screens where I'm like, OK, that's kind of 
Cajun, but yeah. Oh! But he does. I I know. I buy into it. I'm like, yeah. yeah it's I great. feel like I would have the same reaction. Yeah, it was kind of like what Nathan was saying at the top of the podcast about just fearless performances. Like yeah. Being yes. able to go into all those different emotions in one go. Yeah, I feel like Nick Cage doesn't have an ego problem like a lot of actors do. He's willing to get in his underwear and chug vodka on on a oneer. This was there was this wonderful moment actually when he's sitting on the toilet and his like leg like his just his white ass legs and uh pouring vodka down his throat i was like nicholas cage is built like me i could do this movie <laughs> yeah i kind of see it i kind of see and it. i love it i was like genuinely happy about it it's funny you say that because i've never actually met nathan in person fun fact audience true mm-hmm. and i've i've honestly just always pictured nick cage every time you speak oh that's so nice well specifically nick cage in raising arizona Eh, not far off. You're not far off. I picture Bill Duke. Oh, so. sure. Thanks. <laughs> that means a lot to me. Let's talk about Bill Duke, though. Not in this movie enough. I feel like they needed someone who could come in and be, uh, like, instantly trustable, I guess. Like, mm-hmm. you would believe this guy has access to this information, has access to all these weapons. And what better person to grab than... You know, the dude from Predator and Commando. I was going to say, this This feels like it's if he survived Predator. This is the life he would be right. living, just out in the woods. <laughs> it's, Nathan, it's funny you're saying that because I just watched um, the new Soderbergh movie, like, last week. Oh, yeah. And Bill Duke's in it, and he's, like, not the normal Bill Duke. Huh. Oh, yeah. He's, like, he plays, like, a mob boss or something in that. And I was, like, Interesting. Oh, he's, going against, he's going against type right now. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could see Bill Duke pulling off that performance. I wish he was in this movie a little bit more, but he's in it. I'm glad that he's in it at, at all, for sure. God, can you imagine Bill Duke in a chainsaw fight? That'd be rad. Oof. Yes, that's now it's all I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing some research right after, you know, the Nick Cage bathroom scene as to, like, you know, Nick Cage during the making of this movie. Um, I found this note interesting. This was the first movie he had done after his divorce. So he was married for 14 years to, oh, yeah. um, to Alice Kim Cage. And he said that his performance in this movie was inspired because he didn't know where to put all those emotions of having his divorce to suddenly end. In fact, wow. he was quoted as saying, um, you know, th- his, his marriage came to, a, quote, a sudden end. A shocker to me. I didn't see it coming. Wow. And those feelings had to go somewhere. So they went to this performance. So that makes it all the more tragic that this movie is about him and his wife or his girlfriend yeah. dying in front of him. Yeah. And like that's why I'm like, that that bathroom scene, I feel like, is almost like... We talked about this once before, Mally, but like um, Jennifer Lawrence in Silver Linings Playbook, where she's confronting Bradley Cooper on the street. And I'm like, I don't know if that's necessarily acting. I think that might be a real genuine thing she's yeah. working through <laughs> on camera. Yeah. So what you're telling me is that the bathroom scene was actually Nick Cage just on set, and they were like, roll the camera, roll right, the camera, right, roll the camera. Right. Maybe that wasn't playing. <laughs> this shit's good. Um, yeah. yeah, Cage was working through that, and then uh, the director was working through the death of his parents. Yeah. Like, he, he said the movie was about grieving his parents, and so, like, everyone's kind of working through loss in this movie, and you could really see it's that. very therapeutic, yeah, kind of movie, for sure. Which, by the way, uh, Panos Cosmatos' dad, George P. Cosmatos, directed... Like some great '80s trash, like Cobra, and uh, I did not know that Ram- Rambo: First Blood Part Two. Like the dude's Holy a shit. The dude's a legend. Yeah, so he's responsible for for taking Rambo into the strange direction it went in from the first one, <laughs> right? Essentially, uh, I don't know if I like him for that or hate him for it. But you uh, gotta if yeah. you haven't. Oh, he also made Tombstone. Like, oh, come on, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this is where we get introduced formally to the black skulls with their yeah. exposition i mean we get them a little bit earlier but uh this is where bill duke kind of lays it out about them um there is some hints of this but i guess it's never fully addressed one way or another is there anything technically supernatural going on in this movie i don't no, think so. i think they just like tripped out on some bad lsd and started eating people yeah i i think we've all been we've all been there we've all had that day michael you yeah, feel like you're debating well, they don't have any like superpowers. Like they're clearly. I mean, the guy's got a. a that one guy gets an penis, arrow through his throat and pulls it out like it's fucking nothing. No, you're right. right. You're right. 
But that could also be I'm hopped up on fucking LSD. Right. Yeah, I think that that's all the drugs, bro. As someone who currently lives in the state where people get their faces eaten by dudes on bath salts, I think that, like yeah. it makes sense. Yeah, yeah um, that's true. <laughs> Nathan was watching this movie. He's like, I thought they said this was trippy. This just looks like a Tuesday in Orlando. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, everything exactly. In, in Florida is coded in a pink light. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yeah, oh, ever since we got that uh, Chinatown district as yeah, seen in Godzilla, Godzilla vs. Kong. Kong. <laughs> ah, yes, of course. How could we forget? Yeah, conveniently located right next to the... the Pensacola, the Florida, huge, next to yeah, our robotics the, factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, is there a better moment in this movie than Nick Cage getting to a fight with a guy, throwing him down in a bottomless pit, killing another guy, and then snorting a huge line of coke? Like <laughs> He snaps that dude's fucking neck. <laughs> I have... <laughs> My first note on that scene is he just killed the gimp from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. I feel like that too. I love when the gimp says, you have a death wish. And he goes, I don't want to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. So do rusty box cutters freak anyone else out? Yes. Or is it just me? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, I, God, like there's two ways I don't want to die by drowning and by getting cut by a rusty buck that's also rusty, my stripper name rusty, rusty. box cut oh my god <laughs> rusty box cutter coming to the stage rusty box cutter <laughs> at treasure chest from gone girl <laughs> rusty box cutter. what were you gonna say marco I thought about Russ when they had his hand like nailed to the wood Ugh. when he was also chained up I was like this guy's got a week to do all of this or yeah, else he's, he's gonna die like, <laughs> so he yeah. drives off and he just passes he's down. gonna get tetanus if nothing else <laughs> he's mostly tetanus he's yeah. been fucking stabbed in the rib cage he's been fucking strung up with barbed wire he's been handcuffed to a pipe and a nail through his hand hit on the head multiple times oh like, yeah we skipped the car flip when he kills the pinhead yeah. guy i forgot <laughs> about the car flip good car flip we gotta talk too about this cult because there's so much going on that they don't give you any information on. There's the sure. wasp, first of all. There's the horn of Abraxas to summon the skulls. There's the 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 blade the dagger. Yeah, the yeah. the blade of the pale knight from the abyssal lair. <laughs> There's a lot going on you with this piece skull. of human excrement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't even talk about uh, Linus Roach showing off his dick to Mandy, which apparently he he had some. Uh, he was supposed to be masturbating when he did that. And he said, look, I'll get naked, but I'm not doing the masturbation. And he said the only reason he was convinced to do the nude scene, because he had reservations about it, was because he saw Margot Robbie do a full frontal in Wolf of Wall Street. And he's like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> and he, he, was like, he was like, I look at least 70% as good. Oh, weird. He did <laughs> masturbate, though. Well, I guess a, it was more of a close A up. little, but he was supposed to be like full on. Gotcha. Yeah, he, he was definitely doing some tugging. Yeah, he, was, yeah, yeah. he was scratching them thighs, tweaking them nips. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Nope. <laughs> nope. This is also where we start the animated sequences that yeah, look like something yeah. out of the heavy metal movies. I was going to say, it's interesting that so rad. Mandy so dies and then everything we get of her after that is animated until he finishes his mission. She's only yes. animated up until... That's a very interesting choice She's haunting his dreams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, did anyone else feel like, because we didn't talk about this really, but um, his, his axe that he forges... Oh. The beast. I, I feel it's great, but I feel like it's a bit of a hat on a hat because he also has the bow that he calls the Reaper, I think. Yeah, the Reaper. I feel like it's a little bit of a hat to give him two unique weapons. You know what I mean? He doesn't, and he doesn't use the axe enough. Agreed. No. But it's I feel like great. He could just, if you don't give the bow, the crossbow a name, then it's just, I've come to get a weapon. You know, then it's something. But for him to be like, yeah. I got the Reaper and I've got... Whatever the axe is called. You know, the, the beast. beast. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little too much, I think. <laughs> I love... Uh, so I know that the, the axe is like modeled after Celtic Frost's logo, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, I have a comparison yeah. right here. But it it's also... Am I wrong? It looks like the scar that's under Mandy's eye also. Oh, I can oh, see that. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're yeah, right. I can, I see, can that. see it. Dude, I... This... Yeah, I've I've got them pulled up side by side. It's dead on. Like you can those... get you can get a replica of the beast for four hundred and fifty dollars, and I keep considering it. <laughs> oh, is it like shit. actually made of of metal, or is it like a plastic? Like it's like a yeah, it's like a metal reproduction. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Has this been on Forged in Fire yet, or whatever that show is called? Because <laughs> <laughs> they gotta make this at some point. 
No, it's badass. Well, when Florida finally like fucking pops up and revolts, Nathan, you're good to go, brother. That's right. <laughs> uh, it's sold out. Nathan, you got to go on that forged and, and fire or flame or whatever the fuck it's called. And Man, fucking like, I legitimately, I legitimately cannot wait for the Floridian Civil War. Yeah, where we're protecting our civil liberties. <laughs> With George is going to be involved with that at some point. Ugh. That whole bottom east, or uh, yeah, bottom east of the country is going to be involved in something. Um, let's talk about the chainsaw fight. So hell yes. Wait, hang on, hang on. We're not hang on. We're we're not to the chainsaw fight yet. We're not glossing over the chemist and Lizzie. Okay, yeah, let's talk about it. I mean, why I is like, there a tiger in this movie? You know, it's originally supposed to be a lizard. What? Just a <laughs> random lizard named yeah. Lizzie. Yeah, Richard Brake says Richard Brake said that when he showed up on set to film, uh, Panos Kosmatos was like, "Oh, by the way, Lizzie's a tiger now." <laughs> Hell of a way to let him know. That's amazing. Doesn't get enough play. I wish the tiger yeah. did something. She just kind of wanders off, right? Right, yeah. but also has that dope as hell like shot that looks like a uh, a cover of the sword, one of the swords mm -hmm. albums, where yeah, the like where... roaring in front of the mountains. Or yes, whatever. so dope. <laughs> yeah, that was dope. No, I feel like uh, it would have been cool to have Lizzie come back to kill maybe uh, one of the, maybe even the fucking Jeremiah at the end. I, have Kate should have rode it into battle. I was just oh about to God. say that. <laughs> oh Lizzie should have been his steed. <laughs> Hell yeah. That would have been fucking dope. But dude, how good is Richard breaking that fucking scene? He's great. It's great. They They've wronged you. Oh, he was amazing. Oh, Magnetic. so good. I was kind of, I was kind of half in at that point because I was a little drunk from the moonshine, but uh. <laughs> what exactly happens to his character? Did he get does he get killed right there? No, he doesn't. He just walks off, right? Cage, yeah. Cage, uh, yeah. He just tells Cage where to find them. He goes to go to the north. Yeah, most vague directions ever. <laughs> yeah, Cage shows up and he's like, "Oh, they've wronged you, the children." Yeah, no, he Cage is great in that. in that scene. No, I don't think Cage says anything. He doesn't. First, he's like. Oh, like yeah. There's a whole one-sided conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like somehow. The chemist is convinced. He's like, you're right. I should let my tiger out of its cage. And just like, yeah. let's Lizzie out. Yeah, Cage is just communicating through glares at this point. And uh, <laughs> I love when the when the chemist switches the lights on. There's like a piano like yep, riff. The, doo, 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 yeah, that was doo, pretty doo, cool. Doo. I like that a lot. No, I, I I love. I mean, just the amount of acid that he's making. Like you see the little the, the pages of it in the right. Water. It's insane. <laughs> and just his reaction to seeing a man wander into his lab, coated like, him, covered in blood, blood with an axe. With an axe, and he's like, I'm gonna take some acid right now. And he just does a little, like, finger yeah, dip. it's just something to take the edge off. Yeah, Richard Brake is fucking incredible. He's in like the only like clean place in the entire mm -hmm. movie yeah the most mm -hmm. antiseptic looking place yeah i agree i love that the lsd lab is like neutral territory right yeah <laughs> yeah it's the it's the continental from john wick once you get in that's that's that's, that's, hol <laughs> that's, hol that's holy ground right there um all right can we uh can we jump to the chainsaw fight because i got some stuff to say <laughs> um i love two things about this chainsaw fight one it's a chain there's chainsaws and it's a well, fight I love that it's basically a dick swinging contest because Nick Cage has got his chainsaw and then the other he guy pulls out the extra down. long. <laughs> oh, yeah, mine's it's, bigger. Well, and, you know, I mean, Nick Cage right there at the beginning, perform performance issues, you know, it happens to every guy eventually. And the, the, sec the second thing I was going to say is now, Mally, this is somehow the second time in our, our history of this podcast that we've got a character that gets killed by falling onto an active chainsaw. Can you remember what the other one is? I don't even remember what episode we did last week. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the listeners, this was, I think, season one. We talked about uh, a little trio known as the Trimmer Brothers. Ah, yes. From, from Smoke and Aces. Mm. Where oh, one of them falls sure. Into a chainsaw. Perfect. <laughs> a perfect film. Mm -hmm. So now we have to start a new category of the show to someone die by falling onto a chainsaw. <laughs> did you um, guys did you guys get vibes of that moment in Batman 89 when the Joker pulls the long gun out of his pants? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> whenever, whenever he pulls out the chainsaw. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Well, I was going to say this reminded me a lot of the Evil Dead remake. Remember that chainsaw yeah. fight? Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. A pretty, that's a pretty solid chainsaw fight. So yeah. I was going to ask, and Nathan, I know you have some opinions on this, but which movie has a better chainsaw fight? this or texas chainsaw massacre part two. <laughs> oh, oh man. my god you got dennis hopper going against leatherface yeah <laughs> i would say texas chainsaw 2 
because it's Dennis Hopper with two little chainsaws uh-huh. against Leatherface. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael, have you seen Texas Chainsaw? I Man? haven't. Not part okay. two. It's a blast. I watched it for the first time in quarantine. It is in. It's gone, so. It's a canon it's go- film, yeah. first okay. of all. It's f- it's so bonkers. It is wild. I add it to the litter box. Watch it just. For the Dennis Hopper part alone, because that dude is he's he's like he's going the guys for in this movie on LSD the whole fucking movie. He is insane. That, that movie, movie came out the same year as Blue Velvet. Oh. And you're getting two very different <laughs> oh my hoppers. God. And like yeah. Hopper, like what's so crazy about especially the, the coolest thing about Chainsaw 2 is that it's the only sequel that Toby Hooper made. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. he was like, I want people to like people weren't picking up on the dark comedy of the first one so i'm gonna go full gonzo comedy with this one yeah it, it's it's in i can't i'm speechless at trying to describe it it's it's bananas. a trip yeah and this is so funny but the movie we're covering next week i have a little bit of a connection between that movie and what we're doing next week so i'll i'll save that really oh, god but i think nathan you especially will appreciate my, my note on it okay. anyway <clears throat> so I I could have done without the senior citizen describing how good of uh how good she is at fucking to Nick Cage. That kind of really put I'm me off. Sensual lover. <laughs> that character is fascinating though. Like you yeah. you can tell she's so <laughs> angry about the whole Mandy situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like she doesn't want to like she she wants to stay in Jeremiah's favor and she just can't. Yep. Oh no, she she thinks that she's like his princess and yeah, yeah mother marlene not. <laughs> yeah but that does lead to an incredible moment where she's telling him how she could take care of him and like she'll she's she's like a, an incredible love maker and then we cut to cage chucking her fucking head into the room where jeremiah <laughs> oh, is waiting yep. that's provocative <laughs> um i gotta say we get to this this climax where uh jeremiah and nick cage have their moment uh, I, you know, between this movie and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I kind of love this revisionist history of watching Charles Manson uh, be reduced to pleading to sucking a dude's dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't happen in Hollywood, but I do like this revisionist history of like, let's make this dude a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, no, I mean, that's great. I mean, you got uh, Nick Cage quoting Joseph Campbell to, to yeah. him, so that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we didn't really talk about this too much, but yeah, the a lot of the distorted voices in this movie and the echoes and the trippiness of it it's it's really good i mean i like linus roach as a cult leader it, it's fucking yeah. cool it's fucking good it's a good performance for sure i also, think you I, could I, argue we, go ahead i was gonna say one quick uh note on the subject of cults and your comment about revisionist history that ain't revisionist that's literally how charles manson was he's a bitch <laughs> right <laughs> that's yeah i guess that's true uh, ain't nothing revisionist um, about it he uh, couldn't be in the beach boys <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean that's basically yeah linus roach and the carpenter so that's i mean i'm i, I kind of like this idea of like let's just make these people like Especially when Tarantino did with bastards and made Hitler a fucking idiot. Oh right, too. let's let's keep let's yeah. keep this train going. Yeah, let's, let's get a uh, uh, David Koresh in there. Like, let's do all the fucking uh, cult also, leaders and stuff. Dust, <laughs> no, dude, don't get me started on David Koresh. Um, <laughs> actually, fuck, I just realized I there was a thing. There was a net. I don't think I watched it on Netflix, but it was a show called Waco about the Branch Davidians uh, and fucking yeah. Andrea Rose fucking she was in that too. Oh right, <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Holy shit. Is that the the Michael Shannon one? Yeah, and fucking yeah. uh what's his dude? Is it good? No. I actually <laughs> enjoyed it. I didn't hate it. Okay. I I have a problem with that movie because it really tries to sympathize with David Koresh through a lot of it. Mm, okay. Yeah. I was on my watch list for the longest time, but I never I got around. I think Taylor to it. Kitsch is really good in it. Yes, the performance is great. Like Michael Shannon's really fucking Taylor good Kitsch? in it. I thought it was um wasn't it Emil Hirsch or one of them in there? No, uh, it's Taylor oh. Kitsch and uh, Melissa Benoist and Michael Shannon, I think, are like the yeah. leads. Hmm. Yeah. OK. I mean, it's an entertaining watch for sure. All right. Also, Dustin, I know you can't read, but you <laughs> should check out. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> you, you should check out the novelization of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I just finished it. And it's fucking great. I oh, hear no it's way. fucking good. I hear Dude, it. I'm reading it right now. It's so different from the movie i hear that yeah i hear that but how, how many pages is that it's, it's deep right i think it's like 
late 300s 400 yeah something. around there I, I might pick it i love that it's a paper it's so bag too. fast dude yeah. i started like four days dude ago. it's like you could like you could it's like nine bucks okay yeah. i might have to pick that up i'm i'm about to start reading a, a novel for a movie we're cut we're doing later on in the season that i'm not looking forward to reading but uh -oh. <laughs> maybe i'll pick it up after that <laughs> i think something that's telling about this last like confrontation you mentioned the uh the distorted voices and everything we start to really get that when uh jeremiah and the and the cult dose mandy earlier in the mm -hmm, movie yeah and i think when once cage starts talking in that voice and you hear all these other distorted voices like i think i think we're meant to question how much of what we're seeing is real and how much of it is like his fever dream while he's killing these people. Oh, for oh yeah, sure. definitely. I mean, the final shot kind of, the oh, final for, shots yeah. there kind of solidify that. So in your mind, does the events not play out how we see them? Like, does he kill these people in different ways or? I think he, it's mostly the same way, but yeah, I, I can't imagine unless it's like he's been affected by the LSD in the same way that the black skulls were. I yeah. don't think he's really smushing Jeremiah's head, but who I knows? Mean, why does he, does he take, <laughs> why does he drink that stuff? <laughs> Well, kind of like what you were saying earlier, where he just gets hit in the head a bunch of times, got a nail through the hand. You kind of need cocaine and LSD. To <laughs> cocaine, I get. At that point, I guess. I'm not drinking a random <laughs> substance out of a mason jar. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Chep Chelios would. <laughs> Chep Chelios would. You obviously, Dustin, you obviously did not grow up on a farm. <laughs> 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 the only time I can remember eating or drinking anything that I wasn't 100% sure what it was, was as a kid, probably six or seven. Uh -huh. I remember sneaking into the kitchen and dipping my hand in like a jar of like sugar, like just pure mm. sugar. Turns out it was flour. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was Ugh. not a fun time. I learned my lesson. There. We've all been there. <laughs> I learned my lesson. Yeah, no, see, grow, growing up on a farm, they were just weird liquids and mason jars everywhere. So, you know, you, I just, believe it. you, you had a little fun. Like, I believe that. There was one time I thought I got went into the fridge and, you know, mason jar full of water. I was like, great. Turns out it was the water the green beans had been soaking in. It tasted oh. weird. Wow. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> But you know, it's luck of the draw, baby. Yeah. It's fine. It is what it is. Sometimes you're just gulping down bean water. Yeah. Uh. I don't feel so good. <laughs> uh, I feel, anyway, I feel <laughs> great. Did anyone um, feel like this, the ending of this movie was kind of reminiscent of the ending of Midsommar? Like, because like that, the house. Oh, yeah. The moment you see the church thing. Yeah. That's the first thought I heard. And yeah. then it's burning and Nick Cage is walking away from it, like feeling satisfied. I got that same kind of vibe. It's too. also the most metal part of the score, too. Did this come out before Midsummer? Yeah. This was, I think, a year before. Yeah. Oh, this okay. one came out 2019, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So let's recap the ending. Um, actually, Nathan, this is your pick. Why don't yeah. you tell us kind of what happens at the end of this movie? All right. Yeah, so Nathan, do something. <laughs> <laughs> do something besides sniffle and cough. Um, so, so Red kills all of the children of the New Dawn, squishes Jeremiah Sand's head, sets his church on fire, steals a car, drives away, and has a memory of the first time he and Mandy met. And then suddenly sees her sitting in the car next to him smoking a cigarette and grinning like a madman drives <laughs> off into the sunset which now resembles one of mandy's paintings or almost like the cover of the novel she was reading earlier in the film yeah and the implication is that he is completely lost his mind yeah it's kind of like um it made me think about the the security guard at the amusement park in good time sure where they just <laughs> pour just all pour that acid. acid yeah oh i don't think out of any movie i've ever seen there was a character that I felt more terrible for yeah. <laughs> like that dude is brain Gone. dead <laughs> no yeah the, the the final shot's incredible with the the yeah. planets in the background and everything mm -hmm. i kind of forgot that's what the ending of this movie was i i thought from what i remember he just kind of drives away but yeah that was a nice little surprise for me yeah and then the credits roll over silence. Dead yeah. silence. Bold choice. Yeah. Bold Effective choice. Though. Um, we do get slight cagey almost whenever we get the cut back to, to Red. The big and grin. He's got the big yeah. eyes and the grin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Iconic shot, first yeah, of all. For yeah. sure. Um, yeah. I mean, did you guys know there is a post credit scene to this movie? What? what? No. So it's the, the, the term is used loosely here, but at the end, we get a. Uh, uh, a mention uh, in loving memory of Johan Johansson, 
which is nice. Oh, oh good. Okay. Yeah. But also, it's followed up by this image here that I'm showing you guys, and I'll put in the show notes. But it's essentially concept art for the movie. Um, you've, oh. you've got very. Um, I mean, you've got Nick Cage smoking his, his cigarettes and stuff. Oh my God, is that Lizzie? Well, you got like like Mandy and like uh, like heavy metal kind of uh, artwork style, like. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Like, there's like a minotaur and stuff, or a centaur, whichever. Oh yeah, look at that. I think that, I think that is supposed to be Lizzie, but it looks like a wolf. Yeah, the drawing of Cage with Lizzie is the the image in the gatefold of the Mandy soundtrack on vinyl. It's yeah. fucking oh, sick. Oh, you're dude. talking about this image. I thought you were talking about yes. this up here. I was like, this looks like a wolf. Oh yeah, but it might it might be Lizzie. No, we're talking about the big ass thing that takes right. up half the screen. Right. You right, right. jackass. <laughs> Forgive me for there being two animals. <laughs> on another note, I really want that. I would love to have this soundtrack on vinyl. It'd be fucking Absolutely. great. It, yeah, that would be cool. It's so good. I, I got a copy of it after the movie finished. I was like, I gotta go back and get that. <laughs> I listened to this out. I, I, I've i listened to the soundtrack more times than I've watched the movie. I listen to it a lot when I'm writing. It like really gets me in the zone. It's funny you say that because I, again, hadn't seen this movie until today, but I've heard the score hundreds of times yeah oh wow yeah because a couple of my friends watched it and they called me or i was talking to him like the next day and they're like i was like oh how was it they're like dude it's great also the music sounds like the stuff you like you try to make and i was like <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. cool great great no this this soundtrack's great it's it, it's a part of my writing playlist now like it's got good music to write to for sure hell yeah what's what's the best score to write to I think Interstellar's got a great score to write to. A lot of the music from Stranger Things. Anything that's ambient, I think, See, is good. See, I, I, yeah. I, I couldn't write to Interstellar. I love that score. I couldn't write to it. I fucking hate the score. For, I hate the music in Stranger Things. I think it's fucking, it's mediocre at best. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with The Fountain. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Or The Social Network. Yeah, both phenomenal writing scores. I have a little bit of Gone Girls score in my playlist. Um, you know, I put a little bit of a little bit of everything in there, but for sure, it's a lot of it's a lot of Last of Us because that banjo is really great. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> sure, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. I listen to a lot of uh, Carpenter Brute when I'm writing, and the <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> the score for Blood Machines, their mm -hmm. shutter, the Shutter movie they scored is so really? fucking good. Any good outrun soundtrack yeah. or or synthwave is is great for writing. Oh yeah, it it depends on it depends on what you're writing though too. That's true. 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 Uh, all right, fellas, um, let's start getting into some of the good stuff of the show. Let's first talk about something that you've got a lot of choices for. Let's talk about Prop Cop. Oh, I got mine. Go ahead, then. Well, I feel like the axe and all, I feel like the weapons are obvious. Yeah. So I'm not going to go with it. I'm going wardrobe. I want his, like, fucking Halloween shirt. Okay. Like, that's a dope shirt. I, dude, baseball tees are fucking cool. Like, those three quarters. Oh, the, with the tiger on it? Yeah. It, well, I call it the Halloween shirt because it's black and orange, but yeah, it has the big tiger on it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you can get that. You can get that online now. Uh, I'm going to get the that. Company. Nathan, I'm yeah. going to get it. Do that it. That would be sick. <laughs> Damn. Um, did you guys hear about why they chose the number 44? No. Or at least the theories? Mm -hmm. Jackie Robinson. <laughs> uh, You're too off. No. I'm going to take a wild guess. <laughs> um apparently it, the theory was that it revolves around a character from um an unfinished mark twain novel oh um oh the secret the secret messenger or something what's it called i can't re i can't remember the, the mysterious messenger it's something like that i know yeah. what you're talking about Nathan, um, this is your pick. So yeah. what what, uh, what do you want to take from this movie? I, like Mally said, I think the beast is too obvious. Also, sure. I think you can buy it. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to go with the golden gun that the chemist reaches for. Oh, hell okay. yeah. Nice. Yeah, that was dope. Solid. Michael, is there anything you can recall that you were like, that, that would be cool to have? Definitely his truck. Okay. I, at the moment that oh, thing rolled out, oh, hell yeah. yeah. That sick, like orange and red stripe going through it. Yes. <sighs> It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. There's a lot of choices uh, that we could have went with. Would not I'd... want to drive that truck through Los Angeles, though. <laughs> no. Nope. Fuck. Parallel parking would be a bitch. Nathan, I mean, uh, man, I thought for sure you were going to go with Jeremiah's sweet outfit, the robes that he has on. <laughs> pretty great. It's a good robe. I already have a set of robes, Dustin. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, but with those shoulders? Yeah, the shoulder pads he had on. It was like a Power Ranger villain. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. He looked like a Time Lord. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I went with a bunch of different options. There's the the fake book that Mandy reads, Secret of the Serpent's oh, yeah. Kiss. 
uh, I thought was pretty great. There's a vinyl record Jeremiah has. I thought that would be cool. But ultimately, I went with the Horn of Abraxas. Oh, oh good choice. Cool. Oh, like yeah. Magic oh, conch like, shell. Yeah. <laughs> Is that how, from ne- Dustin, next time I'm in LA, when like we're all going to hang out, I expect you to just blow that horn, and then I'll just show up at the bar. <laughs> just assemble, <laughs> assemble Dylan and everybody else. Yeah, here. just, just assi- <laughs> assemble Du Bois. Assemble Du Bois. I am showing up in black leather. <laughs> Just heads up. Uh, Michael, you haven't been on the show in a while. This is a new segment we have introduced to us. Um, it's called Bit Part. So essentially, this is um, there's featured extras in the movie, which yeah. this movie doesn't have a whole lot. Right. But is there, uh, I'll open up to supporting characters. Is there a character in the movie that you think would be fun to play? Smaller role, you know, can't be Nick Cage or anything like that. But I'll give you time to think. Nathan, uh, what about you? Is there a bit part that you would love to play in this movie? I would love to climb into a big costume and be Lizzie the Tiger. <laughs> Hell yeah. Solid, solid. All right. Um, Mally, what about you? Uh, all right. I'm, I, no offense. I feel like Dustin has to be Porky, right? <laughs> it's not what I went with. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I'd just be a random black skull. You know, I already got the okay. outfit. Oh, can we appreciate the fact that the black skull with the uh, giant dick knife is named fuck pig in the credits? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I saw that. That's <laughs> the one pig. I want to be. <laughs> I want to be fuck pig. <laughs> That'd be good on a resume. I want to exclusively be, be referred to as fuck pig for the rest of the season. <laughs> yes, I was. Uh, he's he's like in, a, in an audition. He's. Like, yes, I was a uh, fuck pig in 2018's Mandy. <laughs> and they're just like, watch your profanity. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, what about you? Is there a character that you think would be fun to play? I was going to say Porker because that's that, fine. That shot of him like getting pulled away by the black school. When yeah. Oh, it's great. Sacrifice him up. Yeah. I don't know. That would have been a lot of fun. Also, like just dying your eyebrows blonde. For no reason. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Nathan, I thought for sure you were going to go with the Cheddar Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> Cheddar Goblin. <laughs> but, uh. This is a very bit part, and he's only in the movie for a very brief moment. I want to be the guy that offers Nick Cage a beer in the helicopter. Oh, sure. During the opening credits. Just avoid all of it. (laughs) I I get one day of filming. (laughs) One day, one hour. One hour. (laughs) You know, uh, speaking of new segments, I feel like we should revive Best Kill for this one. Oh, that's a good idea. Best Kill. Ooh, Best Kill. Nathan, you sound like you got an idea of one. What, What do you want to pick? Oh, when he shoves the beast down Ned Dennehy's throat. That, that's what I was going to go that's with. Pretty Damn great. it. It's so <laughs> fucking great. rad. Just the gurgling, you know, mm-hmm. so yeah. unsettling. It's pretty good. Um, I would say I kind of like that there's just a random bottomless pit that one of the skulls gets yeah. thrown into. <laughs> that's true. So I kind of go with that one. <laughs> Plus, he beats him with a pipe that he's handcuffed to. Right. That was pretty cool death to me. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of fucked up, but I think... Mandy? Mandy. <laughs> yeah. Mandy's a yeah. Pretty, pretty gruesome death. It's, intense. it's fucking brutal. She's in a bag. She doesn't even know what's happening until it's, you know, burning. <laughs> I loved the, uh, when he cuts fuck pig's throat and just bleeds, like, excessively <laughs> all over Nick <laughs> While he's yeah. screaming. That, you know, face that oh, he it's a, I mean, he's, it, it's followed by him snorting the line of coke. So that whole death, I feel yeah. like, is, is pretty great. <laughs> all right. Um, well, without further ado... The reason we're all here and the reason why we have the word try in our opening (laughs) slogan is we're going to try to find the silver lining of Mandy. Oof. Who wants to go first? I I feel like I have a Mally answer. Okay. Oh, yay. (laughs) Uh, Cage got his drugs for free. (laughs) That, oh my God, that was my answer. Then I changed it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I mean, that's a silver lining. Um, okay, ironically, my answer is the guy that makes the drug survive. <laughs> the chemist survives. I'll buy less one tiger. Sure. That's, that's the real silver lining. Lizzie doesn't get harmed. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I will say uh, mine is like I tried to have like an actual one. I mean, the, the obvious one. How fucking dare you? Is Nick Cage gets his revenge. Mandy gets a revenge. Yeah, that was, that was my original one. Yeah. But I went with um, something a little more... Um, emotional and that is although the ending is implied that nick cage is mentally just gone forever um i will say that he's still clearly evidenced by the ending he still has that loving memory of mandy yeah we see when he first meets her and everything she's in the car with him for a moment so i think um that's all that red really seems to care about anyway right and so i think uh no matter what the cult did to her he's they can't really ever take her away from him you know he still has that that nice memory of her and 
that's that's all he needs to get through the day. That flashback is a beautiful moment. Beautiful. Of them at the bar, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I noticed on the second watch, too, that he has the 44 shirt on. She's wearing it. One. Oh, is it her? She's, she's wearing it. Are they both wearing baseball tees? I thought it was him. I was pretty sure she was the one wearing it. Oh, and that's wow. why he says it's his favorite shirt. Yeah. No, he's wearing that shirt throughout the entire movie. He gets to keep the beast. I guess that'd be Hey! Fine. hey. <laughs> true, 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 true. in there, man. Also, Bill Duke survives. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. There's that. All right. I think that's enough to add up to a silver lining so drugs good job everybody um all right well mandy obviously ends on a downer note so why don't we offer a double feature a pick-me-up alternative to mandy something you can watch after you watch mandy yeah uh, hopefully will bring your spirits back up put you in a better mood so uh michael i'll give you time to think about it um Mally, let's go to you pick me up alternative i mean i'm pretty sure i've used this as a pick me up before but it's a classic so how can i not i'm going with face off because mm-hmm. what like after a movie like mandy nothing brings a smile to my face like just a movie that begins with the immediate murder of a child <laughs> <laughs> follow not too far on from that Nick Cage describing how he can eat a peach for hours. <laughs> yeah, I could eat a peach all day. Um, Nathan, how about you? Pick me up. Man, you uh, you tipped the hat to it earlier, but my pick me up is Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part Two. Yeah, yeah. It's so one. fun. It's so ridiculous. It's rock and roll as hell. Whenever you do decide to watch it, Michael, let me know your thoughts. Like okay. live, live text me about <laughs> it. <laughs> it's so weird. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say. This is a movie I've only seen once. It is a Nick Cage movie, but it was so insane and so kind of totally opposite of this movie that I feel like it would be a nice pairing. I'm going to recommend a movie called Army of One. Oh, yeah. Oh, where shit. Nick Cage plays a guy that is trying to hunt down Bin Laden. <laughs> I never saw oh, that. Wow. Oh. Never saw that. It's forgettable. Yeah. But... It does have some fun moments. I mean, Russell Brand plays God. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. And only Nick Cage can see him. <laughs> so. Fantastic. It's it's a weird one. So. Uh, what about you? You got an I idea? I mean, is this not like a spiritual prequel to Ghost Rider? Right. I mean. <laughs> his attempt at a Marvel hero where he just goes fully insane. So you're recommending Ghost Rider. I'm recommending Ghost okay. Rider. I'll go All right. Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> By the guys that made Crank. So there you go. Uh, you the second, oh yeah, the Spirit of Vengeance. Was, the, only the second one was Crank, guys. Mm-hmm. Um, the universe of Hollywood is a lot smaller than we realized. <laughs> on that note, um, what I had asked Dustin and Nathan earlier. Oh yeah. Um, oh right. Was out of every Nick Cage character in a battle royale situation, who's coming out on top? So we've had time to think about this a little bit. I, now you seem like you have an answer already ready to go. So why don't you tell us what you think? I mean, ironically, I think it's it's Ghost Rider. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it has I mean, to be Ghost Rider. Much principle. I th- yeah. I think that's fair. I think it's his character from Mom and Dad. Oh. Yeah. Who just doesn't fucking give up. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. As long as as long as all the other cages are his kids. But Ghost Rider can piss fire. Yeah, you, well, we don't know that <laughs> mom and dad until mom and dad gets a sequel. We don't know that that's not you know one of his powers too. That's a fair mm-hmm. point. That's a fair point. I, I I have a theory um about who who would be the best, and it's only a movie I've only seen half of because I was just like this movie is way too wild for me to finish. Okay. But his character from next. Ugh. Because he's able to see into the future, so he could just avoid. Wait, you didn't a lot of problems. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> you didn't finish next. Oh no! No, I, I, dude, I, I tell you where I stopped. Okay, there's like a whole like five minute scene between him and I think a police officer, and then it's revealed that that's like a vision. And I was like, what the fuck is going on with Dustin, this movie? <laughs> Dustin, if that made you angry, you have to finish the fucking movie. It did make me angry. That's all I said. You have to finish it. It is... All right. I might put it on tonight. Without spoiling anything, it is the most insulting ending I've ever seen to a film. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I, I'm convinced. Really, I hate agreeing with Nathan, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. I might check it out. What about his character from G-Force, that hamster movie? <laughs> That was going to be mine. I, I watched that oh. movie with my kid sister growing up. Oh, man. Did you have a, a an idea? It was... You really were going to say the It G was going to be Speckles. <laughs> I don't know what other Nick Cage character has access to that much high, high tech, like, sure. gadgetry. Before I, before I settled on Ghost Rider, I was going to go with Spider-Man Noir. Oh, nice. Man. Oh, that's a good one. 
Is his character, I can't remember, is his character already dead in Drive Angry? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I That's fucking love idea. Drive Angry. Drive Angry is fucking wild. Mm hmm. That, I, I, honestly, Drive Angry is kind of a precursor to Mandy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, well, that's Mandy. Last little thing I want to ask here. Um, do you recommend this movie? Absolutely. I'm so happy I finally seen it. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. It's a movie that needs to be watched at least once. I agree. It's universal yeah. praise between us. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm loving this Nick Cage. I wouldn't want to call it a, re a renaissance, but like the more serious side. Yeah. I'd say a, re a renaissance implies that he went away for a while. Uh -uh. True. Never. True. This ain't, That's why this, I don't want to use that word. This ain't a McConaissance. This ain't a fucking Catherine Hanaissance. Yeah. Nick Cage stays putting in quality work. Yeah. Also, it, it's weird because he is doing movies like this and I'm getting good, good word from Pig. Color Out of Space is a really good movie. Uh-huh. But... He's also doing movies like jujitsu at the same Dude, time. Dude, <laughs> that's just, that's, that's range, bro. That's range. Did you guys have the same reaction to, so I heard Nick Cage was in a movie called Jujitsu, and I pulled up the trailer, mm -hmm. and the first thing that it, it was just like, all of these warriors have been sent from different planets. And I was like, why is this movie called Jujitsu? <laughs> this is. Why the fuck not? This is definitely a late 90s movie. Yeah. For sure. This is like the one. Is it? Who else was in that? Was it Eco Oias from The Raid was in that, right? I think I think you might be right. Oh, no. Tony Jaw. Tony Jaw and Frank Grillo. Because if you need a guy to do a movie, an action movie for $12 million, you get Frank Grillo. <laughs> True. All right. Well, um, that's Mandy from 2018. Um, listener, if you have some thoughts about Mandy, please send them into the Seven Lines playlist at gmail.com. Or you can DM us on one of our many social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Reddit. Wait, real quick. Let's not sleep on the fact that Nicolas Cage does have um, the unbearable weight of massive talent coming out next year. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for that. A movie about Nick Cage. <laughs> Very interested. With a f absolutely phenomenal cast. Mm -hmm. You got Sharon Hogan, Pedro Pascal, Tiffany Haddish, and Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah, I'm in. Mm, That's yeah. going to be amazing. I'm also kind of thinking they kind of uh jumped way too quickly into doing this uh tiger king show i feel like it's uh it's not it's not happening anymore yeah the one with him got shelved the one with john cameron mitchell is still happening though okay hmm. i still think fucking david spade should have been joe exotic it's just him just doing joe dirt that's all it is yeah, let him do it definitely do it <laughs> i don't th i don't think they should make a movie about that at fucking all not at all but if they're going to right yeah. like if they were going to make a movie it should have come out the same month that fucking documentary was popular because no one gave a shit two weeks or later at right. least the same year it's it's too late now yeah um <clears throat> anyways yeah please uh if you haven't already subscribe rate feedback all that good stuff we really appreciate that so the only other thing I got for this week is a clue for what we're going to be talking about next week. I actually know what we're doing next week for once, and I'm so mad. You do, because I mentioned it last night, too, saying I'm so fucking angry. <laughs> I hate this movie. Yeah, I do, too. So my clue for next week's movie <clears throat> is that the movie executives behind this franchise were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they did not stop to think if they should. And they shouldn't have four fucking times already with a fifth one on the way. Oof. <sighs> That's it. Hmm. I've already rewatched it in Bummer. preparation, and I was so mad all last night. <laughs> I have not seen this movie. <laughs> I appointedly did not want to see this movie. So thanks, guys. I am so excited to hear what you think about it, Nate. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, yeah, we're talking another franchise movie next week. Uh -huh. um, a really bad one. So... We'll have fun with that. Because I got notes. <laughs> who picked next week's movie? I don't know. I wonder who, whoever picked it. It wasn't me. I don't know. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. Uh, all right. Well, anyways, rest in peace, Oatmeal. Uh, and I want to give a shout out um, to one of our fans who reached out to me. Uh, oh, yeah. On Twitter. Uh, Alan. Uh, he m messaged me directly. He's a storm chaser. That listens to our show. And oh, I thought whoa. that was really fucking cool, but that's fucking rad. He, uh, you know, reached out to me and said he appreciates the show and also, you know, gave me some nice condolences to, to Oatmeal's passing. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate that, Alan. Yeah. Keep doing good work. Stay safe. I got a question, Alan. If you're listening, um, quick question. On a scale of one to ten, how accurate is the film Twister? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to know. Funny you mention that. We... We talked about this off air. I was like, does Twister qualify for the show? Could we do Twister in honor of, of Alan? <laughs> so. Right. Because I, I don't care if I, I know it's probably not accurate because no way a fucking belt is holding up against those winds. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I mean, that's, that's a great fucking movie, man. I might, 
You know what? I might be double watching next and Twister. <laughs> double feature. What a combo. <laughs> the next Twister. That's the sequel. <laughs> I'd watch that. Uh, anyways. Um, yeah. Thanks, Alan. And thank you all. If you made it this far into the episode for all your support, we really appreciate it. So tune in next week where we're talking stupid movies that are franchise sequels. Um, and until then, as always, <laughs> I was waiting for someone to take I was it. waiting for you to do it. You teed it I, up. I thought I always what? do Excelsior, and I know Melly's got something he's going to shout. And I was trying to remember the evil line that Nick Cage shouts, and I can't oh, remember. I, I did have something, but now I feel like the moment's passed. Yeah, it's yeah. gone. Fuck, we ruined it. I am your god now. <laughs> Excelsior, guys. Did you just say seltzer? Excel, Excel, yeah, no, I'm just very stuffy. Oh. <laughs> Excelsior. 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 Excelsior! Oh. Look it up! up another fantastic episode of the silver linings playlist if you would be so kind we ask that you leave us some feedback on how we did plus a like and subscribe we'll be back next week with another great episode see ya